Good morning, Sharps. I'm here with Tristan Wade today, and we are going to be talking about when to hero call on the river when your opponent donk leads into you. Yeah. You play against a lot of donks? I feel like I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to find games that you can beat. And even if you're only okay at poker, if your opponents consistently donk lead into you on the river, how can you lose? That's not a good strategy, but... Let's see if it works out for the opponent today. You raise it up in a $3,000 freeze-out tournament with the queen-jack offsuit in the cutoff, playing about 50 big blinds deep. Only the small blind calls a recreational player. Are they loose? Are they splashy? Are they nitty? They, they were kind of just recreational ABC, it seemed like. I, they got to the table 45 minutes before, so I didn't have a whole lot of information, but they weren't doing too much out of the ordinary. Okay. Yeah. But clearly not a pro, right? Yeah. Didn't, it's interesting. A lot of people have a difficult time putting their opponent on a skill level, but to some extent, you can kind of tell that if someone is not stacking their chips just quite right, or if they're confused about what's happening at the table, or if they're saying things that a professional does not say, you can make reads very quickly. This player is not a good, strong pro. And if you don't know who they are, that's also a decent indicator. That's a good like point you make. I think that's a topic people don't really touch on too much is how do you identify people? How do you identify the skill level of someone? And like you said, you can hear from what someone talks about, how they play one hand sometimes, um, or whatever. So I think that's an important element, an important element to understanding your opponent. Yeah, and you also don't have to definitively know that your opponent is right. horribly bad or really good to, in order to make a specific play. You can just kind of presume that if someone is clearly not a pro, clearly a little bit recreational, they're probably going to make some sort of mistakes, even if you don't know what they are. All right, fine. Flop comes. Queen, nine, five. You flop the super nuts. Top pair, good kicker. What more do you want in life? Yeah. Pretty opponent, good spot. Opponent checks. You go for small bet. I don't actually hate maybe even betting like a little bit bigger. You bet 3K into nine. On this queen, nine, five, it's really easy for your opponent to have a lot of draws. And I think a lot of recreational players just don't fold gut shot straight draws, as they shouldn't. And they also don't really raise with it all that often. They just call a lot. And if they're going to be calling a lot, then you, in turn, just want to bet bigger and get more money in the pot. That is true. I, I also looked at the other element of, okay, they call from the small blind. They have kind of a tighter calling range. I feel like I'll get more of the mediocre hands to call a bet here, like if they have a small pair or if they have some suited connector that, you know, pair to five or pair to nine here. So I was kind of, you know, thinking on the other ends of being more exploitive. Here. Yeah, I mean, well, in my mind, I just don't think those are folding. If yeah. you give your opponent pocket sixes, they're probably just going to call one bet, period. Uh, so you might as well make that one bet 5.5K instead of three. Yeah, and I guess my experience is some of those amateurs are a little more hesitant to call that one bet when okay. it's bigger and move forward in those hands. So I think when you give them a little more rope, that that's kind of how I was looking at it. All right, yeah. sure. So you go three. I do think three is like fine in default, but get more money in the pot. Yeah. All right, turns a, turn Especially is a, a queen nine. You know, the queen nine board is pretty draw heavy, so I understand completely what queen you're Queen nine and five, because they could have eight, seven suited, seven, six suited. Very true, stuff very like true, very true. Um, if it was like queen nine, two, I'd be way more inclined to go smaller, because then there's just way fewer draws, and if they're sitting there with whatever seven, six suited, that, it doesn't make a difference, right? Good point. And you want to do everything you can to induce them to do something silly, but here, it's just so easy to have a, a calling hand. Whatever, turns it to, opponent checks, keep betting, right? More or less, yeah, we can. I, again, like I said, if this is someone who has a tighter range, if they have ace-queen in their range, then then that might start put you into a realm where you want to play this pot a little more controlled, play it with a smaller bet. And I feel like some amateurs might have ace-queen here. So I guess that was part of my element of thinking, engaging my player. But yeah, more or less, we have a value hand. We have top pair. We're, we're fine to keep betting here. Mostly. Yeah, and there's still a lot of draws available, right? I mean, yes. lots of gut shots, lots of open into straight draws, and it's very easy for your opponent to have those. And when it's easy for your opponent to have a lot of draws, you don't want to let them see the river for free in scenarios like this. And, I mean, I'm, i got to imagine you are probably supposed to check back, like, queen eight suited if you have it, and maybe maybe like queen ten offsuit, maybe. But even then, I think even queen ten in this spot's a pretty good hand just to keep betting. So yeah, don't check back the the good top pairs. Yeah, queen six suited maybe could check back queen seven hmm. suited if you're playing those. You're loose and creative. Oh yeah, from queen the, six suited from the cutoff. Yeah, why not? Why not? All right. So you go ten k two thirds spot, bumping it up a little bit, which I think is fine. Opponent does call. River is a six, so the eight seven comes in, the six five comes in, the nine six comes in. And your opponent bets 40000 into the 35000 pot, a little bit more than the size of the pot. They donk you. They donked it right into me. All right, mm -hmm. how, what are you thinking about in this scenario when your opponent 
generally ABC, amateur player, check call slop, check calls turn. Here, take almost all of my money. I had no idea. Honestly, I had no idea. I'm like, wait, why would this person check call, check call, and now check lead here on this six river? Well, there's two reasons. Yeah, Either. Tell me. They have the nuts and they are afraid of you not betting. Okay. Are there nuts available here that they could logically have? Would they call your two-thirds pot turn bet with eight seven in the scenario? Doesn't Probably seem not. likely. Yeah, okay. it doesn't seem likely. So we can remove the eight seven. What about six five or nine six or queen six? Those are the most likely value hands that may play this way. Opponent may not even defend those hands in the small blind, right? Like queen six, almost never. Right. Uh, nine six, almost never. Six five, maybe. What about sets? Could they ever have? Six is here? And they probably fold that know. to the big turn bet, right? You would think. So Or deuces? Would they play that kind of weird? Call on a flop bet? Call on, check call on the turn and then just leave them? I don't think probably that makes not. sense. They could also have um, well, a lot of busted draws in this scenario. That's the other time people lead because they cannot win. They right. either lead because they have the nuts and they're afraid that you're checking back, or they cannot win at the showdown. Period. They have a busted draw. So are there a lot of busted draws that make some sense? And I think uh, there are actually a lot of those because your opponent could easily have king, jack, king, 10, or jack, 10. These are all hands that they would very often call with, even if they're playing well from the small blind, and then get to the river, have no showdown value, and think, well, I guess I need to try to bluff now. So in this spot, there's not a whole lot of logical value hands. There's a few, but not a lot of combinations. And there's a bunch of combinations of, partic of uh, available bluffs. So then you have to ask, would my opponent play their value hands this way? Let's presume they're going to play every value hand this way, and I don't know, let's say there's 12 combinations. Then you want to ask, how many bluff combinations are available? And in this spot, I don't know the number, I'm guessing off the top of my head, it's probably something like 36 or something for busted draws counting your blocker, right? So let's say there's 36 possible bluffs. How often will they donk with those bluffs? Because in the spot, we're getting roughly 2 to 1 pot odds. If they have more than 6 bluffing hands total compared to the 12 value hands or whatever it is, then you have an easy call. And I think in this spot, I would not be shocked if your opponent's bluffing with those bluffs half the time, maybe. Mm -hmm. 36 divided by 2 is 18, so they have 18 bluffs, 12 value hands. Obviously call. You call with any bluff catcher here in this scenario. You especially don't want to have blockers to their bluffs. So if you had a hand like pocket jacks here, blocking king jack and jack 10 really hard, that would be a way worse hand to call with than, let's say, ace queen, or even like queen queen three or like eight nine suited or something nine yeah seven like suited yeah if you had that. nine yeah. nine three suited if you decided to be really creative right because that doesn't block any of their busted draws right mm -hmm. so the actual hand strength of your of your um bluff catcher doesn't matter all that much if you're very confident that your opponent's range is likely very polarized to either like really good made hands or busted draws now the problem comes in when your opponent's donk leading with like queen 10 or queen jack or king or queen king queen was a worry here yeah because then, now some of your bluff catchers lose. And the value of your bluff catcher goes up. Like right here, Queen Jack's a pretty good bluff catcher. Because every once in a while, your opponent's going to show up with Queen 10 or Ace 9 that's just making some weird play. Yep. So anyway, when you beat all the bluffs and you may beat some value bets, a simple rule against most people is to just say call. <laughs> don't and fold. Don't fold. <laughs> now, when there are almost no busted draws available, perhaps because a lot of the draws came in, like let's say there's a flush draw and a straight draw and they all arrived, and then your opponent leads the river, then you want to fold because a lot of the logical bluffs don't exist in their range anymore because they improved to good hands. But here, there's a lot of logical bluffs. And when there's a lot of logical bluffs, even if your opponent's kind of ABC... Even if you don't know... Yeah, well, you're never going to know. Right. But even if you are unsure, pot odds exist, right? Pot odds. Say it in the webinars all the time. Yeah. Pot odds. Pot, pot odds. odds. Pot Two to odds. one. It's hard to not be good. 33, 35%, whatever we need to be good here. And, um, I mean, I would have called. Did you fold? I didn't fold because the only <laughs> way you can know is if you call. <laughs> oh, you like to be able to sleep at night. I do. Well, you find the call. Your opponent does show up this time with the pocket nines. No, no, jack 10 for nothing. They, they didn't have the pocket nines. They had the jack 10 for nothing. You scoop a loop a nice spot. Yeah, it felt good. And you um, win. Yeah. I had a hand in the World Series main event where I had a bad flush, and the river paired the board in a spot where I thought the opponent had a lot of sets, and they donk led into me, and I was sick about it. And what'd you end up doing? Pot odds, man. I called, <laughs> and you know what they showed me? They showed me a stone airball bluff with a nut flush blocker. I couldn't believe it, Ooh. and I scoop looped a nice spot, too. And this was a guy who I thought was not out of line. Not a big bluff. But you got to realize, right. even though I... 
as a decent poker player, think my opponent's not out of line, I realize I'm not right a lot of the time. I'm not so stuck on my reads that I definitively know that this player I played with for three hours never bluffs the river, right? I mean, that would be an absurd statement, but a lot of people get it in their heads. This player's been tight, somewhat straightforward. They don't three-bet pre-flop, therefore they don't know how to bluff the river. Mm -hmm. But you don't know. And when you don't know, and you have a reasonable hand to call with, like top pair or a flush, find the call and, um, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But I think in this spot, you're probably going to win 40, 45, 50% of the time. And when you only need to win 35% of the time, you're just printing money by calling. And therefore, if you fold, you're giving a lot of money to your opponents. Well said. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's that's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works. If, if you got the pot odds, if you got a good hand, get in there and call. And even if you don't know a hundred percent of what your opponent's capable of, you know we can't view people in one scope all the time because the game flow changes, people's perception changes, the people's mood and their strategies change. So sometimes we just got to get to the river and call somebody down and see what the hell they got. That's right. Simple. That's gonna be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Click the notification bell. Where can people find you on the internet? At Tristan Creative. There you go. Make sure you follow Tristan on Twitter. Twitter's the main spot. Twitter. You like Instagram. tweeting? Uh, sometimes, yeah. What kind of pictures do you post on Instagram? Uh, shirtless, topless, OnlyFans stuff. Okay, cool. I'm just kidding. There's a couple, though. Well, if that's what you're into, then that's for you, too. <laughs> All right, have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. We'll talk to you next time.